Welcome to Angel Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency angel assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, big institutions are only interested in Bitcoin, says NYDIG CEO. So the question has to be asked, what does this mean for the altcoin market? And we really should get verification because this is just one CEO's opinion. Also, cryptocurrencies face greater oversight under Gensler-led SEC. This is going to be the new chair of the SEC. And my question is, what does this mean for XRP and the lawsuit that's going on? And finally, we need to take a look at a uh, great question from a subscriber who asked me what I would do with $100,000 if I wanted to uh, invest into cryptocurrencies as well as uh, save a small business. So I will answer that, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is January 16th, 9.30 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. Nice sweet day, gonna be 64 degrees, so I'm gonna get out of here and play a little sand volleyball. I don't know where you're at, but uh, that's what I'm doing. That's uh, the great thing about living in Texas when it's hot as hell. All right, so Bitcoin, 7.6% up in a 24 hour time frame. Unbelievable. Uh, we have been bouncing up and forth. Uh, I think we were almost hit 40 uh, not too long ago, and now we're down at, th at uh, 35, now we're at 37.5. So just expect volatility. This is normal as we do a stair-step fashion all the way to the promised land, which is uh, major, major all-time highs, because uh, this is the year 2021 for the massive bull run. Ethereum up 16%, that's pretty good. Uh, 12.75, almost gonna hit that uh, all-time high of, I think it was 14.40. Uh, tether's tether. Nobody cares unless you're an auditor or the New York State Attorney General. <laughs> got a polka dot. Uh, 46% uh, in 24 hours. So congratulations, all you polka dot uh, holders. You're up to $17.36. I remember when polka dot first came out, I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, but then I looked at who was behind it because I invest in people. And when I took a look that uh, Dr. Gavin Wood is, is behind it, who is also part of that Ethereum mafia, uh, I was all about it. And uh, I'm glad I got in at the right time. So for all your holders, congratulations, 86% for the week. Uh, XRP has been flipped with Polkadot and really it was close and it was going back and forth, but now there is a, a massive difference in uh, the market cap. Uh, you've got XRP at 13 billion and Polkadot at 16 billion. So uh, it, was, it was flipping back and forth, but I think this might be it for a, a while until that, that lawsuit uh, gets terminated, hopefully. Uh, Cardano up 26%, good, Litecoin 12%, uh, 9% for, or 10% for Bitcoin Cash. Link is up, wow, 22 bucks, 46% uh, for the week. Just fantastic gains all around. USDC, no, nah, I don't care about that. Let's see, Aave, they're 40% almost, $200. Um, I still need to get uh, Stani on this channel. I wanna to talk to him about loans, mortgage loans, 30 years, what they're talking about. And also, here's a real quick thing, uh, synthetics, this is number 18. We did our, our show, which is the Trinity of Trading, where it's uh, me, Weston, and CJ. Weston does sentiment analysis to trade the chain. Uh, CJ does technical analysis with Market Rebellion. I do the fundamentals. And we had invested four days ago into synthetics at $15.08. And actually, uh, you can see all our trades that we do. Uh, I'm not a big trader, but I just listen to those geniuses and they tell me, uh, do this. And I'm like, well, yeah, seems reasonable. So, uh, of course, you know, we take a look at different, different factors, but right now it's at 1508. We were hoping for 20% gains and uh, hopefully we get that. Uh, Weston had called it out at 8% for a short term and then for the uh, one to four days, we're hopefully for 20%, but if not, we might have to only take, you know, 13% gains. How awful would that be? So that's what's going on. We'll, we'll be doing uh, Trinity trading every week. So uh, get ready to check that out and uh, we'll do another one uh, next week. All right, and that's what's going on with the market. Real quick, I just wanna go through uh, and just look at how would we have done if we were invested just in the Bitcoin? Because that's what we need to compare it to, right? Wanna just invest in the Bitcoin, make things easy. Well, if you invested in uh, Ethereum, you'd be up 8%, DOT 35%, Cardano 17%, Litecoin, you'd be up majorly across most of the altcoins. And that is the big thing about this. That is why for my portfolio, I try to be as safe as possible and I will put in at half is Bitcoin Ethereum. And the other half is uh, different altcoins, uh, you know, Cardano and uh, Voyager and EOS and Polkadot and all those uh, good ones. But uh, for the most part, I just plan to play it safe. And I've been dollar cost averaging for the last uh, four years now. So it just depends on what you want to do. And uh, again, altcoin season uh, looks pretty good for right now. So we'll see how it all goes. Oh my God, sushi, 23%, watch out. And Avalanche, which I need to really check out, looks pretty good. All right, so that's what's going on with the market. Let's jump into today's top story. This one was pretty interesting uh, because 
NY Dig, I, I'm not really familiar with the, what those guys or I know what, what they're doing, but uh, I'm going to bring somebody on who, who actually does. And what this is all about, in the latest episode of The Scoop, NY Dig, The Scoop is a podcast brought to you by uh, The Block Crypto. And it's pretty good, but they had NY Dig Chief Executive Robert Gutman. He said that most of the serious investors, and that's the key word, serious investors, uh, that he's speaking with are only interested in the largest crypto by market cap. And he states this, 100 out of 100 of the last conversations I've had with investors seriously looking to allocate, let's say over $50 million, 100% of those conversations have been about Bitcoin and 0% of them have been about any other crypto asset, he said. So that is an interesting case uh, to talk about. And I mean, this is, this is good to know. What does this mean for altcoins? Does that mean that you shouldn't invest in altcoins? No, absolutely not. This is just what big institutions are doing. I think when very large institutions, when he talks about uh, over $50 million getting to the whole uh, rigmarole or what's gonna happen, uh, if they're gonna invest that much money, then it, that will stabilize the crypto market. Bitcoin wise. Now, as far as altcoins, it's going to be a little bit uh, up and down, but that could be what you want. If you're looking for fantastic gains, um, that could be where it is. But for right now, to play it safe, it uh, looks like Bitcoin is, is the safest bet that you could make because a lot of these places are getting into it. But that is just one CEO's opinion. So what I want to do is I want to ask somebody else who is an institutional player and actually talks to these guys, these billion dollar hedge funds, so we can kind of, you know, just back this up. So Let's uh, let's uh, talk to Alex real quick. So Alex, I just that was the article right there, and that was Gutman, the CEO. First of all, who's NY Dig, and is that the truth? Because you deal with all those different billion-dollar hedge funds, because you are the head of institutional investment at Equan. So tell me if that guy's full of it, or if that's exactly what the people that, that you talk to are saying. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, nine, first of all, the answer is, uh, he's spot on. Uh, the, the folks over at NYDIG, um, which is, uh, New York Digital Investment Group is a, uh, group within a traditional asset, uh, called Stone Ridge. And Stone Ridge is actually a very prolific manager in the side. And the fact that they have $12 billion plus uh, in assets from investors under management and been doing this for quite some time. They have been under the radar for the last three plus years, uh, going through various regulation hurdles and getting regged up. One day they popped out into the news and said, hey, we're a qualified custodian. We have a, our own custody business. We have um, our own this, our own that, all around digital assets. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was quite impressive. But um, they're, they're a very quiet, large force in the crypto space. Got it. Okay. So that, is, that was the big question. And then the people that you talk to, because you're talking to, and, and of course, you can't tell me your partners, but when they're asking you for like, you know, talking about cryptocurrency are they talking about we want to get into bitcoin are they like we want to get into ethereum we want to get into xyz eos cardano or is it just bitcoin like he was saying no it, it, there, there's two different buckets of the institutional side one is the corporates the treasuries uh the investors those guys are only talking about bitcoin right now that's all they want they're seeing what square and what micro strategies are doing and how that can enhance their uh, balance sheets or their long-term investments. The other bucket is asset managers. And those asset managers, depending on what their strategy is, will take arbitrage opportunity in any coin that, that presents itself with arbitrage. But when it comes to the corporates and the treasuries, those institutional investors are only talking Bitcoin. Gotcha. So it makes sense. So Bitcoin, the safe route, but there's still a lot of room to run for the altcoins. There is, and I, I think Ethereum is uh, is is a close second in conversation. Um, but there there needs to be some more. Uh, how do you say it? Uh, long term uh, long term studies done on it. Yeah, I gotcha. All right, man. Hey, appreciate it. And then let's jump back. All right. So I hope that puts it into perspective because it's these stories are great, but really to get the whole picture, we have to get it from. Uh, multifaceted sources. You know, we can't just, just rely on something. We try to get as much uh, sources as we possibly can, and that just makes sense to me. So uh, just to continue on with this one, I just want to just to uh, follow up on a couple of things. So 
This was actually uh, the Block Crypto where you can actually listen to the podcast. But what was in that podcast that wasn't talked about in the other article was this. Um, Bitcoin investment firm, NYDIG, raised $50 million in October. It quadrupled its clients, and life insurance company Mass Mutual purchased a minority stake in the firm. So Mass Mutual, if you remember, they put $100 million into Bitcoin, which is nothing to them because they have billions and billions of dollars. And they are like old school players. So when they put something into an asset, what the CEO of NYDIG talked about, he said, hey, you know, these guys, they do their due diligence. They have a team of people look at all the different assets they could potentially invest in. And it's a very slow process. So when they get to the point when they're actually going to invest, they're going to come big, they're going to come heavy, and they're going to put a lot of money into it. And this is a prime example. So not only do they put money into Bitcoin, they also put money into NYDIG because they did a lot of research. And that's what they found is the best option for them. Uh, this came about because Bitcoin is transitioning to a predominantly institution-owned asset, according to NYDIG CEO Robert Gutman. So this is the big thing. When you see people out there who are big-time players, um, one of them would be uh, Menard, uh, this, the uh, chief investment officer for Guggenheim. At first, he came out and said, hey, we want to invest into Bitcoin when, at $10,000 and $20,000. Well, they couldn't get regulation in time. Now it's at 40000 and he went on a little Twitter, a little, twit, a little tweet rampage and said, you know what, you probably should take some profits and uh, you know, just sell your Bitcoin because they want the price to go down. And uh, I think that's what's going on. I see that um, Kevin O'Leary from uh, what is it, Shark Tank, and he's on every single time I see him. He's like, well, I don't understand Bitcoin. I don't understand Bitcoin. And he's been doing this for years. And I'm like, I, I know this guy. Has, he's not stupid. He's got to be investing into Bitcoin and just poo-pooing all over publicly. But then private is like, hey, buy some Bitcoin. Nobody's, nobody's that dumb. Nobody. And, and he always talks about, well, I don't understand the whole process of it. I don't understand. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You were talking about it in 2013. So anyhow, Mass Mutual made a $5 million equity investment in NYDIG last December, as well as a $100 million Bitcoin investment for its general investment account through NYDIG. Based on the set of macro circumstances 2020 presented, COVID, quantitative easing, massive printing, uh, insurance companies are starting to question whether they can go forward only buying corporate credit to make good on policies. Over some number of years, it's hard for me to imagine it is not all of them uh, coming into, Vic, uh, into Bitcoin, he said, if mass mutual can get there from a diligence perspective, so can the next one. It's definitely coming. And then he just talks about, hey, you know what? Everybody should be in Bitcoin. It's their fiduciary duty to get into Bitcoin because if not, your stockholders will be like, what did you do? You put it all into cash in the treasury. Uh, the purchasing power of the dollar has decreased. There is so much being printed. We're printing trillions of dollars. You guys messed up. We're not going to invest in your company. We're going to go to a micro strategy relating to what the hell's going on. So that is what's going on with that piece. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Sue, so, this one's pretty good. So this guy, Gensler, he's going to be leading the SEC. Uh, the last guy, what his name was, uh, he wasn't really big on cryptocurrency. But this gentleman here, I, I listened to a talk. He was talking at MIT and he was talking just like, I mean, he could run this channel. Uh, probably, probably more so. And uh, he was just saying exactly what, what cryptocurrency could be. He specifically talked about Ripple. Get to that in a second. And uh, this guy really knows the ins and outs of digital assets. But uh, Gensler previously chaired the CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and was a partner in Goldman Sachs Group. Goldman Sachs, let me just tell you one thing. The same thing we just talked about a little bit ago about people like, oh, I don't know, I don't understand what's going on. Well, guess what? So Goldman Sachs, they're going to enter the crypto market soon with custody. And this was a little piece that just came out yesterday. And it said, like JP Morgan, we have issued an RFI, a request for information, looking at digital custody. We are broadly exploring digital custody and deciding what the next step is, said the Goldman source, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, tectonic shift took place. Eh, whatever, that's boring. So the whole thing about this is, is JP, JP Morgan in the beginning all said the same thing. Don't like Bitcoin. You know, Jamie Dimon's like, I will fire any of my, my traders who even touch it. Well, then all of a sudden they get into it. And then here we go with Goldman Sachs. Not only that, Goldman Sachs, not just recently in May 27th, they had a little uh, investor powwow where they brought everybody in and just showed them slides about investment opportunities. And uh, out of that, they just said that, oh, no, no, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, it's not even, a, uh, not even an asset class. 
Uh, this was an investor call Wednesday. This was back in May. Discussed per current policies of Bitcoin and inflation in the context of the COVID-19 crisis. The big takeaway, investment bank is still not a fan of Bitcoin or the cryptocurrencies. Uh, in the call materials, Goldman notes that while cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin have received enormous attention, they are not an asset class. So it's, I don't mind people changing their mind. I don't mind you. That's funny. I don't care if people change their mind, right? That's great. You have more information and you change your mind. But to me, it just seems very odd timing that all of a sudden everything's going up I'm like, oh, you know what? This does look pretty good. You're telling me Goldman Sachs, a multi-billion dollar company, didn't have the ability and the foresight to put a team of people together and go, you know what? Take a look at this and tell us that this is something to invest into. And after 10 years, there's the best performing asset class over a decade. They're like, you know, we're going to pass. Yeah, right. Anyhow. So, Gensler. He's, an, he's advocated for a nationwide way to register and monitor cryptocurrency exchanges instead of leaving oversight to the states. Interesting, because every state, they have to approve you for whatever you were doing for cryptocurrency. New York is one of those things. Uh, you have to have a specific bit license, and that's why, like, if everybody's looking for Voyager, one of my top picks for 2021, the VGX token, you can't get it in New York because New York sucks, and uh, that's just how it is. They don't suck. They're just doing their due diligence. Don't sue me. So it is good to have an ex-banker in there who is smart enough to recognize the value of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to building wealth and value in society, said Tim Draper. He will understand the importance of allowing innovation while watching over banks who might try to restrain trade by blocking the use of superior currency. Gensler has also advocated for greater regulation of cryptocurrency exchanges. Real quick. I would love to have this happen, actually, for regulation for cryptocurrency exchanges, because some of them go down at the most inopportune times, Coinbase, and I don't understand why they do these things, Coinbase, because they shouldn't, this shouldn't be allowed. If you have more lawyers than you have engineers, there's a problem there. So I think really what it comes down to is if they want to regulate some exchanges and say, what are you guys doing? Why is this down all the time? Are you holding out for your institutional investors? Because we know you're helping out MicroStrategy. We know you're helping out these other big uh, institutions. So are you holding back some things? Don't sue me. Uh, I just think that's what's going on. And it's just my uh, personal opinion. I have no proof of that. If it gets broad adoption, if we really think the crypto world is going to be part of the future, it needs to come inside of public policy envelope, says Gensler. This means we need to guard against illicit activity. And yes, we need to protect investors. The crypto exchanges, big exchanges like Coinbase, need to come within the SEC or the CFTC. And lastly, uh, Nick Carter, co-founder of uh, Coinmetrics, says this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Essentially, that's what it is. And uh, he does. Like I said, there was, a, there was an MIT piece where he was just laying it all out. You know, this is what cryptocurrency is. This is what digital assets. And he uh, specifically talked about Ripple. And people, especially the XRP army, were really ecstatic when this video came out. Like, ah, see, this guy's going to drop. This guy's going to drop it. Not so fast. So, this is Jake Chervinsky. If you don't follow him on Twitter, uh, give him a follow at Jay Chervinsky. He is the, uh, I think the, the chief, chief counsel for uh, Compound, uh, the uh, cryptocurrency, Compound Financial. And he states this, Gary Gensler deeply understands crypto and has strongly supported Bitcoin for years. This election as SEC chair signals a policy shift in favor of Bitcoin ETF. That's big. Maybe Kevin O'Leary can, can stop, you know, spewing his nonsense about Bitcoin as an ETF before I get into it. Sure. He also went on record in 2018 saying there's a strong case that XRP is a security, signaling no shift on that issue. So if you're excited about Gensler coming in, just remember he called XRP a security. He was a big proponent of Ripple, but Ripple is the company uh, and the software company and XRP is the cryptocurrency. So let me just think of the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. So this one was interesting. And I already, all, already answered that uh, via email, but I wanted to bring it to everybody's attention, see what they thought. So uh, this was from Michael. And I blocked out his information because, you know, don't want to share any of that. I'm not Ledger. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, sir. I hope all is well. I'm seeking your financial advice on an investment. Here's my background. I have a small business food industry that is failing miserably thanks to COVID. That does suck. I need to somehow save it. I have 100K to invest that probably I can stay without for one year. I'm torn between investing in Cardano or Voyager. I need what will give me the best return over a one year period. 
uh, it may be a long shot, but any help directing me would make a difference. Thanks for your help, Michael. So, so first of all, Michael, let me come here, uh, talk to you real quick. Uh, I'm not a financial planner. I can't give you any financial advice. I just can't. I can't tell you what to do, especially with your business. That's a, a deeply um, personal decision that you have to make what's best for you and your family and your business. I can say this. If it was me and um, this happened to me, well, first of all, you have to understand as a business owner, uh, the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program round two had just been ruled out. So talk to your bank about that uh, because that's exactly what I did. I called out my bank. I said, hey, they just rolled that out. So what's the process? They emailed me over some, uh, some forms that I filled out and I'm going to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program. So that's one thing that I am doing. I'm not saying that you should do that, but definitely you might I want to take a look at that. I don't think that's financial advice. That's just, that's just uh, something to look into. Uh, so that is the first part. The second part is it, if my business is struggling, first I have to take a look at my business. So with, with COVID, there's a lot of businesses that are, that are definitely struggling. So you have to understand, like, I just went out last night, me and my wife, and we went to a place called Julio's right down the street. Great place. And uh, it was a 30-minute wait for the restaurant to get in. 30 minutes. So wherever you're at, I don't know how destitute it is as far as COVID. Sometimes you have to take a look, a real hard look at your business and say, am I doing the right things? Am I attracting the right customers? Am I doing the right things to stay competitive in post-COVID-19? And they were doing a lot of different things as far as you know, separation and they spaced everything out. So you know, even though there was a long wait, maybe they also are hurting. So that is, that is really that part. The, the, the other part is, another sound principles is, it doesn't matter how great your product is. Um, I hate to say this, but really it comes down to marketing. And I'm gonna give you a prime example. You sitting there watching this video, what is the best hamburger in your town? What is it like a, like a Bronco's Burgers or Dave's or you know, uh, Jerry's best burger down the street or whatever else? What, who has the best burger in your town? Well, I don't know where you live. And I don't even know what country you're at, but I can tell you right now, uh, the most popular burger uh, is McDonald's because uh, they serve billions and billions and they wipe out any other different place that you have in your local town. And that's who's there mostly. And the reason why they do it so well is because they are masters at marketing and land ownership. Really, it's land ownership. Uh, everywhere you go, they're there. Also, uh, you'll see them on social media, you see them on commercials, you see them everywhere. And there's a juggernaut because marketing. Are they the best food for you? Absolutely not. They are delicious though, <laughs> but not real good if, you want to, if you're working for your apps, that's for sure. So take a look at, am I marketing enough? And then to get to your question, um, what would I do with 100,000 between Cardano and Voyager? Well, first of all, I think Voyager has a huge upside potential and I've talked about this in a couple of different videos and uh, I will link them at the very end. Uh, but if I had to make a choice between those two, uh, I would put uh, Voyager 60%, Cardano 40%. And would I invest 100,000? No, probably not. Because you have to understand, if I have 100,000 and that's what is, my family is depending on that, you have to realize that with cryptocurrency, we could lose 80% of the value tomorrow. And that's a reality. That's a reality. Something could happen, some other crazy thing that pandemic, who knows what could happen, right? We saw this in March. There was a huge dip. So if you're depending on that to pay bills and put food on the table, I would not put in a cryptocurrency because you never know. However, in the long run, to dollar cost average in, I would do that. I would probably take 100,000. And the first thing I would probably do is I would take, if I had 100,000, depending on, there's so many variables, I would probably put $1,000 into, uh, let's say 1,000, 1200 bucks into Voyager and I put $800 into Cardano and see what happens. And then I would go from there. And then I would probably think about every couple of days to investing and see where things go. Or I could do uh, what uh, me and Diddy talked about. Uh, Diddy went all in. I do more dollar cost averaging for the long haul. Or I just, we call it the uh, triple D, uh, triple DCA, which is uh, Diddy Dan dollar cost average. So instead of just taking it one lump, or over years, you just take six, your whole wad, whatever it is. Let's say that I say I have 100,000. Maybe I take, tw let's make uh, six times three, 18. Let's say $24,000, okay? 24,000, and I'm going to put uh, two, three, four, six, and yeah. I'm gonna take $4,000 today, and I'm gonna split up between Cardano and Voyager. And then in two more weeks, 
I'm going to take $4,000. I'm going to split it between Cardano and Voyager. And then two more weeks and two and two and two. So that way, if you do something like that, if you look at the, at the charts, especially if I would have done this in 2017 and just took all my money, let's say I had 100000 and instead of going in the, like towards the top, if I would have said, okay, I'm going to take, uh, you know, what, 20% and I'm going to put it in on day one, two weeks later, I'm going to put 20%, two weeks later, 20%. Well, that's actually fit, but whatever. Math. So I could have really spread that out. Now, if you want to ask me what I would do as far as like safety, Cardano and Voyager, you never know. Right. I think Voyager is going to be a big play, but what we just talked about in the very first article, if I want to be very safe, I put a lot in Bitcoin, I put a lot into Ethereum, and then I would scale down and I would probably look at Voyager, Cardano, Polkadot, Chainlink, and however you want to do that. So that is essentially uh, my what I would do. Again, not investment advice. These are the things and there's many options for you to do. but. The big thing is just be careful, sound money principles, uh, take a look at your business first, paycheck protection program, marketing, what am I doing post COVID and then go from there. All right. So uh, that is it. Thanks a little bit longer on a Saturday, uh, but a lot, of, a lot of things go on. What can I say? So if you like types of videos, there'll be two more that's going to pop up on uh, your left and right. And uh, that is all. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.